This is BTW RLM 255. You freeze dried enough? Is that what we got now this time of year? Freeze dried cricket? Going below freezing and raising up the temperature before uh, into refrigerator temperature. We saw you out, dry you, freeze you back up. Yeah, cowboy tech. Yeah, uh oh, no crickets. No, there are the crickets. That's the problem. And I'm uh, going through this uh, anal uh, continuing analysis, but uh, seems the lots of y'all don't have a have a clue what really what we're up against. And though I have a lot of people that concur with what. You know, it's like speaking to the choir. We really don't go any farther than that, and that's not going to really work. I say this every week, and then I go to Monday and through the week, and we prove it because we're doing stuff that eventually works out. It takes a while, but it works out. It starts to clean things up, get us back to what we were told things were supposed to be, and so that that's what fortifies me against pretty much everybody else that would say otherwise and you know, try to criticize what's going on. And it's, to me, it's just uh, when you finally get get real and get involved, you'll see how much you're in error or not. And so it's kind of water off a duck's back, Chris, uh, over there at UCY. Water off a duck's back with some people, to me, about what their opinions are relative their, to their disagreements or different ideas. So I come here every week to try and explain to you what, I guess my path continues to be. It's not to be exalted about anything. It's just what I found needs to be done, and, I, and that's the problem. It's the done. It's the it's the problem. It, it seems to be most people is the done, and it's not getting done. And there's a continuing analysis for behind which of whether or not anything really, really is valuable. I hear lots of com people that say it is, but and, and again. The response in places is pretty cool, uh, but I wonder uh, what the efficacy of all this is. What we kind of go go through, and uh, in fact, as I now think about this, it's funny how this all comes around. Uh, I think I heard last week uh, Clint Richardson, who would come on after me. I don't know if uh, UCY they're going to have him play a tape a file or not. Clint Richardson had, had, had go through the same problem. After you see this stuff for a while, it, you got to you got to rethink how I continue to come here every week and keep talking, even though sometimes I think that I just want to stop. Uh, it's just really like it happened to me again last night. I'm kind of sitting in that tonight. I didn't want to put my tabs up. You know, I had to have a fight with myself over just putting the tabs up. Cause I just wonder, what, what good is it all? Now, I know it is some good, and that's why I keep coming. I know that there's a good. It's just that what's the efficacy? And I heard Clint Richardson, I think he should actually has now come to a determination that he's not going to continue his broadcast because he th he believes, and I would have to agree at some level, uh, that he can put his energy into another place, and he's going to be doing the definitive, if I have to understand this right, and I hope I get this correct, the definitive uh, vaccine uh, video, uh, audio video, whatever, uh, video probably, documentary, like he does so well. And it was strictly on numbers uh, that you put out. YouTube uh, would uh, have, over the years, that his, uh, his video, I think it was Lethal Injection, which is his last uh, video about this thing that goes on about these viruses and vaccines and other other things because I that's when I was showing I explained to him again he was a he's an excellent he's an excellent object lesson of how how a guy can be a, anyone a guy gal can be an a runner in the long distance marathon we're in where people can hand each other a baton of information and and they run with that and, and Clint for me is really that that guy what he's done with a few things I pointed out to early on was just phenomenal. But he's now looking at his efforts being more fulfilled at going to YouTube, making a documentary where YouTube gets a quarter million views over this time, which is really an under, that, that's to my mind not, not sufficient either. But that's what it was versus a couple hundred people that he would get listening to his broadcast. And uh, he was talking about, if I remember right, talking about hope. <laughs> if he doesn't, he doesn't give any. And then he said his listenership was it doesn't, since he doesn't give hope, his listenership is is only what it is. And I I kind of laugh. I said, well, I'm if, if that's what if this is all about, giving nobody hope, then I certainly am uh, on that trend. 
because uh, my listenership just doesn't doesn't really exist compared to even his. You know, I don't offer hope. Exactly what 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 he's come up with, with, with his observations on this. Maybe and he may say things better than I do actually uh, at some point. My my strength is in my comprehensive understanding of how things are and actually doing stuff to work through the problems and, and the opinions and the conceptual ideas and actually get stuff that starts to work, notwithstanding anybody else's opinion of it. But anyway, I, I did want to, uh, just uh, hearing uh, Clint recognize uh, my efforts in his, uh, my small contribution to his path uh, was humbling, at least, to see what he's done. And if there was a question in Clint, you know, Clint, if there's a question, if you're listening, about my admiration for your work, don't don't let that be there. That we don't work together is a bit of a disappointment, but apparently that's how this was supposed to work as well. Uh, I think there's more that we could do, but I don't necessarily think that we need to at some level, and I'm fine with the, how, how that works. But if you will, Clint Richardson is one of the, for me, I had just handed him some information. I said, you really need to look at this world, this whole thing this way, and here's where you're going to find it. And I, my first uh, contribution to him was to show him the, what civil civil equal rights really is, and then we moved on on to Title Fifty, and so then he you saw that part being put in. The, uh, he read Title Fifty, the parts that show the government can hurt you and give itself license to do so, and the abomination that is. And then we were at the, same, at the time of Obama as well. It all works pretty well synchronistic, uh, synchronously that way, or synchronously that way. But like as I said, it, we we are kind of working the same thing, working it out in our in our own path. We have to learn we have to learn our, our way in our own way and that's everyone will do that. And so anyway, I I'm disappointed a bit that uh, Clint is not going to have a broadcast on UCY, but I'm not disappointed in how he had to decide and that he wants to focus on doing something. He explains to you in last week's broadcast on UCY, it takes a lot of work to do the broadcast. I am sitting here as a compromise to that that I decided to put what I could together using the notice every every week that ties together comprehensive matter across the globe, across the news, across the notice to you, to show you that there's no notice of what's actually going on. And and in, and then in my insight, uh, what I have, I hope to contribute, is how you work about getting at those wrongs. I was ab- really, because uh, I didn't know where Clint would go with this trivium idea. I'm on record years ago, even on Oracle. Uh, the trivium is a neat idea for those that don't have a learning capacity or le- didn't learn quite right and give them a path on how to learn. Uh, but the trivium, as I hear now uh, Clint uh, mention it and acknowledge, it's a w- it, when it's used as a weapon, it's certainly a, a, a destructive weapon. And that's how I saw it come out. I've no, you've heard me only a couple of times speak to it. I don't want to vilify anybody uh, on that, but it's because uh, I was listening to nonsense come out of the method. And it may have been a good method, and it may be a good method, uh, but when it's used as a weapon, it was no good. His acknowledgement of that uh, really was a big deal for me at some level, because I was hoping that, like, I've heard a couple of great guys kind of get r- wrapped up in these things that it brought forward for your consumption. And this is what they want us to be. They want us to be consumers. This whole system is, is set up to be a consumer, not a producer. And, and that's what I speak. That's what I speak. I, I find myself right in that spot for years and decades now, right in that spot where the distinction is not to be a consumer, but to be a producer. And I think Clint came to that recognition, too. I just want to point out, it's not about more than when you finally get on the path, you you see what the truth is, and you then have to make come to terms with that. So while I'm a little sad to hear that he won't do a, day, a weekly broadcast, he is going to be turning his sights on something that he can do for people, I think, in, in a power that he has. Early on, I was hoping, because I came out of video myself, or was really wanting to be focused on it, but that's not the path, the options that ho- happened to me a long time back. I should say since about 2000 or 2005, after 2005 for sure, uh, that I wanted to do more videos like documentaries. And I saw Clint, he did that. And I said, wow, this is great. That's what I that's what I would be focusing on. So anyway, my hat's off to Clint and his efforts. And hopefully he'll come back with what he does best. And uh, it'll be in a way more people can get at it. Uh, he won't compromise any further on, on his best efforts. My compromise here really is just one of getting the message out just in the context of the day I come here to talk to you. I've worked out my schedule such that I focus on this day. I have to put a few hours in before on Saturday night, and it is a compromise, and it is only what I can do. And I can't get into certain things in certain formal ways. 
that I'd like to, although I've told you sometimes these for, it's not so easy to get into the formal ways because it's like handing everybody a, that thinks they want to know something and thinks they can wield the gun. They, they end up shooting the cat or themselves in the foot, if nothing else. So, great. I appreciate Clint's acknowledgement of the pressures and the, and the trouble travails and his determinations at the end. I want maybe you to go back last week and listen to that, and I want you to understand it seems to be a universal view. When you get into this thing, you start seeing the realities of stuff, however you really come to it, not all the fluff, and you start to cut right through all this nonsense that comes before us to consume. Uh, folks, I, I not to district, if you need the trivia method, fine, but if you turn around as a weapon, like because someone's not using it, uh, that and it becomes a weapon, so now they're no good, you become the, you're a lead in your own mind, then it's a weapon, it's not it's not fruitful for you because I was listening at the time saying, well, I don't necessarily use the trivium as I analyze it. And I got knowledge that none of these people do, even while they're analyzing and coming to the wrong conclusions on the same subject matter. Only I can put myself through a process of proof. And all they have is their weaponized rhetoric and grammar, misused grammar and all that stuff that other people speak so much better about, but I found was useless to me. However, I've come here has been a truth week after week for all y'all. It's been a truth. For how we proceed. I mean, I and we, the we that work with me. Now, on that point, someone's been requesting, um, it's interesting what comes through, what people perceive about the broadcast and what they don't, how they're offended and how they're not. And I was going to make some comments uh, that came to me from a, another forum, but I, I think I'm going to hold hold my, my position on that. It's uh, hard to discuss when people don't agree with you. The couch disagreement. <laughs> That turns out to be um, a challenge to my credibility, and uh, I don't see how that can be. You either prove out what's being said, or, or you can't. And uh, so I'm not going to address that, but I do want to address helping people out, and in particular, uh, an email that came about asking about in the chats about stepping in and helping. I would step in and help offer certain ideas. Well, I do that just to let y'all know. I will do that, and I do that all the time. When someone has a, a question, I said, always bring me something to work on. Don't bring me a generality. And certainly, certainly don't be someone who brings uh, misinterpretations mis uh, in, in, as something I said and then try to get me to discuss it. It won't happen. And, th and so that it's a, a non-ending, non-ending, non-argument uh, that you get yourself uh, wasting time on. But it was asked of me to, uh, I said, I'll just read halfway through this. Do you mind going through the actual laws like Title 50 in the chat and explaining uh, what things mean? So I'll ask, answer that. And I would refer you to Clint Richardson's uh, movie. In, I think it's Lethal Injection. Boy, I hope, I hope that's right. Where about 20 minutes in, he actually reads the, the uh, parts of the, of the uh, Title 50. If you can't go to Title 50 on your own, then you can have Clint read it to you. And I think I'd rather have you start there. You can see his work as well. But Title 50 is something you need to read, and you have, need to understand you're watching the savings clause of a government, not the people, but the caucusocracy inside the government giving its license to hurt you. You need to read those black and white words. I could explain it. I could waste my time in the chat to type out something in a form I don't really do well. I don't type. Uh, but I think better if you just read read that. Also, as a, or tackle 18 U.S.C. 1361 regarding the minor. Uh, being hit under as a criminal on his own land, doing what he was granted to do. Again, that's reading 1361, and in the chat it would be a little bit uh, tedious to do that. Specific, specifically, I can respond to th these things either in the chat or in, in an email, and or I could, like I'm doing now, I'm reciting a, a bit of a ch an email to uh, to discuss it uh, on the broadcast. So those things I'd have you read there. I'm, there's more that you get out of it by reading those actual laws to see they exist, and then then apply what I'm saying to come to a, a better a better rationale of what's going on and, and the comprehensive nature of it. Uh, then there was another question here: What can you recommend to help understand laws, legal formats, etc., to use them in defense against the occupiers when they come knocking? There has been uh, there has to be a small division of crickets learning. What it takes to take them on, or take them to task, I think it said. I don't have that up, but um, and I suppose there is a if you're if you're actually trying to take them to task, you're necess not necessarily a cricket. Uh, I guess you might be if you never ask, uh, never take anything to task. But as far as learning these other things, 
is really more of, and I know no one's going to want to hear this, you have to do the black and white reading. There's just no other way I can tell that. Yes, I can help. But it, as I've told, told everybody before, talking in hypotheticals really isn't going to uh, help. I can, and then also talking about things in the news, I can only touch at a distance. And I can show you how there's alternatives that are right there. And I'm hoping by that you get the, you, you, you can start to get another idea how to frame a lot of this. That there's lots of ways to frame the problem. And if you go back into the black and white that's, that we're being ruled under, and in some regards not so badly if you look very carefully, then you'll find the, how the answer is what's supposed to be. As far as legal formats, that's also described in how you bring something. As I was explaining, if you're looking at 1361, you look at the elements that it takes. That's the format. That's the form that is then filled in by the evidence to qualify whether or not that's a violation. And as we talk about jurisdictional challenges, there's many of them. I think there's about seven different jurisdictional challenges, interestingly connected. I mean, if I can see the connection, though I haven't actually compared them, to what a sovereign, what 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 the seven elements of what a sovereign is. As I explained to you that the United States government was started as a pol political element, which is only one-seventh of an actual sovereign. We didn't even start out as a sovereign, even though they'll tell you that it's a sovereign. It's a sovereign within that commercial context, essentially, and then subject to the peace treaty uh, before it, which means it wasn't, and it didn't come in as a strength, as the party in strength of the tre peace treaty. Everyone thinks a peace treaty is a, is a treaty for peace. No, it's an actual international document and agreement of who could have got beat up, who didn't get beat up, you know, how, what the agreement between the the, the, big, the bigger bully is against the victim, uh, and, and how that's going to work out, and you'll notice the peace treaty was about commerce, and that plays itself out in Article 6 of the Constitution, and the United States is told to you that it started as a political uh, political reason, a political uh, entity. People never, not many people make the connection that that was one of the elements of sovereignty, not all the elements of sovereignty. Anyway, jurisdiction has within that, now you have within that constraint, you have again these seven different jurisdictional questions. It's not just the personum or the person that we talk about, that straw man, whether or not it's actually a man that has a civil attachment or just a legal entity. Uh, those are two standards you have to look at. But there's also the establishment of the courts themselves, where they are, what they're over. There's also the elements within those. And so there's lots of ways we go through in, in answering, uh, or not really answering this question, but what are the, how do we understand the laws is to read closely uh, what, what they've, how they've laid this thing out and start to think in those, those more ordered ways. The, the, that way you speak on point. As I tell you, it doesn't take a lot to speak against these so-called the, the occupier, whether they may be legitimate, as I can see they could be, or whether they actually are coming underneath the color of authority that don't have it. And it's not a long, drawn-out process. It's really fast when you understand what the underlying power you have is to question their authority, the authority, the, the presentation of authority, whether or not it has actual substance is another question. That is a jurisdiction, can be jurisdictional. The straw man, the person, the man accepting a civil obligation, which uh, for all, for everybody's uh, denunciation of it, you all have it. In fact, I, I see more people taking it on than that would talk, that yell and scream about, whine about it being attacked. They take it on as a, as a presumption. And I, I'm clearly not one that does that. And anybody who will talk with me over any length of time, don't come with me with a, well, you can come with me with your preconceived ideas, but if you and then listen to what I'm saying, and I can straighten that up problem out. And it's simply in the statement, uh, you're presumed innocent, and so make it so. Don't let someone impose upon you without a challenge, uh, what I would consider, just in a simple word, a defamation. So there's ways to get at this pretty quickly, but it all depends on what you're talking about. And so these generalities are very difficult to speak through, and I've kind of compromised the broadcast to talk in the general, not talk in the specific, but bring comprehensive ad adjustments to, to, to everything uh, to this. And uh, before I forget, as I just strapped to my, uh, came to my mind, this is BTW RLM 255 for the past cast, recast, or uh, broadcast, uh, wherever you may find it. And uh, again, shout out to Normalization of Ignorance on YouTube. Thank you for your, uh, your continuing repostings of us. Amir, and I've been here 2017 on Minds. Dot com. Thank you for your support and your bonuses and all that's going to help out. I'm still collecting those. I'm still got other things I'm focusing on, trying to figure out the best way to uh, uh, 
promote, if you will, the, the, the broadcast on the Minds.com platform. And those of you that are listening, go right over there and, and remind this this post uh, when you get it over there at any point to help out and spread the word. So uh, Mark on the Beast at Yahoo.com is where you can get a hold of me and uh, to make any communication, uh, requests or insights like I have had about asking about these legals, uh, legalization type, these legalized things that are actually sitting in law at one level. It depends, again, on how you characterize and frame your condition. Uh, how you get at the occupiers is really more typically not in law, but in, in agency, uh, the fact that they don't have it and they apply it to you. And so the administrative side of the what you, it hits you in the face is something you have to duck. And so... <laughs> So you're not really evading, you're avoiding. And if you don't, ha- they may try to throw a pie in your face and you just have to move your head would be one way to do that. So, again, depending on any kind of a defense or a situation, it may actually be in the lead up into a problem that the government wants to uh, foist or create upon you. The discussion yesterday, last week about the minor was just a, uh, given the conditions, as I was telling the, the def- federal defense attorney, you give me a set of conditions, and I'll give you how the mining law applies to protect your client. The problem was that they don't want to use it. They don't want to use those, what I was known as pre-plea remedies and avoidance. Now, those are some things similar to challenging jurisdiction on its seven different levels. Uh, there's more challenges to jurisdiction on more. There's more things within the context of due process that are all challengeable. You just have to know that they're there, and it's... It's it's a big seems like a big high mountain to climb, but it's really all what we were supposed to know that they stopped talking to us about. And so these so called defenses I call them off. They're, they're all they're offensive to the system, so I call them offenses. All these things are offenses because they want to presume you to be the defame you into a character, an obligation and duty that you have that you actually may not. That everybody puts on most most everybody I've heard will just they walk around with this thing on them. And I'm I've been trying to over time explain to you how you, how you stop putting that leash around your own neck. Stop walking as an accessory to the crime imposed upon you. Take the collar off. Take the collar off. Don't accept it, but accept But you got to, people don't like to hear this, you have a certain way to communicate that. It's not all that you know. It's all that they stated they wouldn't do. And so it's a little different focus. It's not going to them for the permission. It's showing that they didn't have the right because everything the system and the government does has to, in at least the United States, has to be enumerated somehow. That's why even in the that's why everything. If you just go on the federal level, you have to get it to registered at the federal register. That's that's showing you it's also a corporation. If anybody paid attention to what I'm telling them, make records and keep books, folks. What do you think they're doing at the federal register? Now a lot of you folks that know about the corp, oh the corporation. Okay, fine. Well, go look at your charters in your counties, and you'll see a lot of counties are set up. They tell you all about how it works. Uh, don't, but they're not to the one, the exclusion of one over the other. It's how, how the condition is framed. I was just dealing with somebody, uh, with somebody on a problem. And I said, go to their charter. The charter is going to tell them the power they have within a compact, uh, based on their inclusion with that in a compact, uh, you know, in a federal interstate compact. Go to the charter. The charter will tell you their status. Sure enough, it's in the second paragraph. Their status is between the is in the second paragraph, and it had to do with their stand, what they are as an entity. They're they are an agency of the state. These counties, now, they're also a body politic. Well, that's another type of corporation, but it's a different type of de- duty and obligation. And then they're a corporation, so they have these three coexisting statuses, and everyone focuses on one. It's oh, you can't do that. Well, they got three uh, two others, and this is what I tell you about looking at all this. You have to go through the whole list. And in my in my mind, there's a whole list of all kinds of lists. I tell you, there's Probability and possibilities, and to me, it seems to be this one uh, big checkoff uh, box, uh, a sheet of checkoffs, and depend, uh, not Star Trek, but you go through and you just check off the status they're supposed to be in a condition, in a certain condition, and that gets you out to the, what the answer and response is supposed to be. And it's really kind of that simple, but it's not something I can just line out. It's something I've had to learn over decades, and I just somehow keep it in me and kept it in me on how all this stuff works. And I come to you today and I say, well, if you want to get involved, get involved, because that's the only way you're going to know what I'm talking about. And everybody who does in earnest and on point has seen what I've said. And I don't we, I don't have an argument with the guys I work with, really. And I have to say guys are because I don't have any gals yet that'll, that will uh, work with us uh, yet. I've been hoping because there's a 
women have a different perspective that are more that has a different power in, in presentation. And, and I, I could certainly use a little bit of that in the right place, but that's not my determination. That's the other thing. I have to wait for someone to come to me or will be receptive if if I see a a contribution that will advance, multiply their efforts. And I'm thinking, I think I think that's how it happened with Clint Richardson. He came to he came on the scene, and I think I saw him doing uh, uh, some things. I think it might have been an understanding. He was also included with uh, Walter Buren, who I had just do, tried to do a video with. Well, I did the video, but it, it, it didn't have the impact that Clint eventually has later. Uh, so I was intrigued of the of the connection, but. I think that's what I did with Clint. I said, Clint, you need to look at this law this way. You need to read this and read this, and you'll see you can't approach it. You have to approach it through this this uh, this avenue, conduit. And uh, that's that's where it was. Well, if the baton was passed, and you see what he's done, is what I do with other people, and we work splendidly together on these projects, but it's not my determination. So I can't determine for you what, what you're going to do. I can only contribute some information that you might be able to use, bring into knowledge. You have to work with that. You have to bring it into knowledge, and then you then you figure out how to apply it. Like one of my, my, the relationships I have right now, it's exactly how this works. I, he comes uh, to me with a question, uh, a situation. I explain to him how it's viewed. I give him the places to go read, or where he's got to expect to find, what he's going to be looking for. He does. Then he goes and does the, the knowledge-based work to get the knowledge in him, and then he contemplates how to apply it, and then he does apply it. It's a, it's really a pretty simple method, but it takes people, you need to get engaged with your own life, I guess, I suppose. It would be a way to say that. Your own interest. What is the wrong you want to make right? And anyway, long way to talk about this, uh, what can I do to help? I can do it in the chats. I prefer to do, do uh, not to explain a lot in the chats. It takes a lot more effort for me, and I'm not that good at it. And it, I, again, links are cool because I can get you to information, but you really have to just pick pick a wrong you need to make right, and we'll focus on any of that, any of that. It works out really fast. Uh, you'll see, you'll see how it starts to pull together that way. So, again, when I make an offer of a of a thing to do, and I say you need, you know, to, if you want to get learn to start getting involved in any different any different type of thing it doesn't matter to me just pick one to go administrative go ministry you want to go to go right in the courts go ahead we'll, 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 let's pick first we'll let's pick what you're going to do and then we'll, we'll i'll show you how to how to advance through it how to look down the road way into the future uh, based on my experience again it's all limited to what i've done if you want to get to just write a you know, letter writing campaign and how to lock someone into some uh, some condition fine uh, in fact uh, the twitter there was some question of to of uh, the new rules about uh, FOIA, uh, and, and and this is where it got me started to think about what what effect what effect do I have? What what good is it to even participate? Uh, I sent back a, a statement I put in all my FOIAs. I never had a problem with I never had a problem with these with my statement in these FOIAs, and it addresses if anybody looked at the at the Twitter line, it addressed the requirements that were done by uh, by the government uh, that they now want to. Oh, I think it was Portland. The Portland police want to. Uh, kick your stuff out or charge you 30 bucks. And I said, well, just include this, include this phrase. And uh, you go and compare that phrase, which I always use before. It just happens to be that it came up uh, now and you apply it to what they're restricting. And my, my phrase will, will defeat that before they can send that letter Uh, was interesting to me that no one responded at all about that, except I did have a couple of people that will like it or, or retweet that. The point is that the social media is not so social, and it really isn't looking for answers, it seems, or it's not appreciative when it hears it, or it doesn't want to work once it sees uh, certain things, or it doesn't have maybe the uh, the honesty, I guess, to come, come back to say that wasn't right either. And so we have a really tentative uh, social relationship with all of this to begin with. And uh, at any rate, going, uh, I will offer, try to offer what I know we've, I do, I've done. And uh, when I say about how do you, like in a FOIA, how do you set up, when you know they're going to try and get in your way, my thought isn't just about writing the letter, it's in the future. How are we going to go after them to make sure the appeal, when they do their dirty deed against you, you know it's coming. How do you do, what do you do to avoid that, if you can, and if not, set up your record to go after them as a crime, what they've done. How do you do that? Is what I do. It's 
It's how I set up my record. I'm looking. I expect to go to appeal. But because of that, apparently, when you set up the record to be able to do a successful appeal, they then answer you. And so you never have to. It's maybe one of the tricks that people miss about the things I'm talking about. And so I set up, I set it up in a fr simple phrase, something you would include with, that's required in the FOIA request, uh, as a, as a suggestion to stop the nonsense that the government's now coming up with. And it's, it seems like it falls mostly, absolutely mostly, on deaf ears, deaf action, or non-responsive action. And that's my trouble behind the woodshed, is what, how far do I go with this? How far can I talk? The crickets that may be wanting to take these people to task, I don't need, I don't need the crickets. I need people to stand, stay, you have a problem, and we get, and you want to solve it, and you're earnest in that, and you're going to drive that to the, to the day you're dead until it gets fixed. That's the kind of people that we're looking at. That's what we need. We need to be that as our own people. We need the so-called educated masses vigilant to to denounce and to to stop the the oppression, and, and we haven't been. And so it's just interesting to see the different uh, interpretations of what I say. Some are insulted by what I say. Some some as as I was not. I'm not going to really get into more, much. They they believe that because I can go coast to coast to show you the comprehensive uh, criminality within the system of the so-called justice system, that makes me less credible. Is really an astonishing view. How do I answer that? How do I answer that I can show everybody how absolutely, no opinion, how absolutely consistent the demise of your due, due process is and how these people that are in those positions are, are hurting you and that, that impliedly says if you enter yourself into this, you get pulled into this, this is what you can expect. How that then... Uh, turns on my credibility to diminish it, it's really a phenomenal uh, jump in my mind that I can't even understand. I can't even begin to approach the problem. But this is the distinction. Some people want me to help, and some people think, I guess, are insulted by me even having, uh, can, being able to prove that your world, your reality, may not be what it what it was, what it is. Now, some people have made the correlation that I did not say between the, that were offended that I attached the mass murderer that was not getting the mental health defense I thought could be possible, which I can't get into all the nuances about that. I don't know what the attorneys would do. I just know what they didn't do. They didn't talk about not entering into a mental health defense and then tell us why. No, that was all kept secret and washed under the rug. But I can tell you that they did the same thing across the board, and I, don't, I see a couple people made the connection, but some didn't. The minor that uh, was in somewhat... Uh, Connect well that I connected up in due process problem uh, was an insult for being correlated with a mass murderer, and I and some people got the fact, and a lot of people may not have. Uh, don't don't underestimate the power that the minor before the government's uh, persecution is a mass murderer of fish sufficient to charge him with a felony. And don't think that's a joke when I just said it. That's exactly what he's being charged with. But the correlation between someone that's a mass murderer of kids, a horrendous act, and his treatment is not different than the way the Gaia persecution works to uh, go after a producer, killing, calling them a mass murderer of, of the creatures of Gaia. And, and so there's a, to me, it's just, I really don't know what to say more than to say it's, that's just an observational problem. Uh, that's something that's a lack of awareness of, of what I am connecting up and how I see things based on what my lessons have been over the couple decades, three or four decades I've been noticing, I uh, started to notice the problem and started getting into, well, actually being almost got shot and killed by it. How's that? People want to get criticized for not telling my history. Well, I do. You know, those of you steadfast listeners know I've over time, I give you little bits and pieces of what happened to me in the past. I'm not a promoter of it, uh, but uh, apparently not, not producing a, 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 uh, a history all the time uh, makes me less credible as well. But I don't really, in some regards, I don't care. You'll either listen to the truth of what I'm saying, you'll apply what I'm saying, and, and, and you'll understand the truth of what I'm saying really is more of the point. Or you'll just you'll just sit there and just be the crickets, or you'll think you're doing, you wait till the right time. Uh, folks, we're being run over. It's the right time. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to tell you. I can't help that you feel abused, that I connect up a mass murderer of people with a mass murderer of fish. The government persecutor thinks you're an animal anyway. Why don't you get that? Get that, folks. It's in the code. That's what that's what Clint Richardson found out. 
uh, and I just I smile uh, just to w- listen, to watch what he that guy what Clint, Rich, Clint Richardson has done uh, to pull this information together has been pretty phenomenal. So anyway, I w- I, going back to that, I wish I wish him a lot of luck on his project. I hope he gets it done quick so people can get the benefit of it. Um, but anyway, I hope that uh, I hope that answers the one emailer's um, questions. Uh, the chat's a little difficult. I'll do it. You know, I'll do it. And, but it's better going to be when I respond. I tell you something. Go do the research. Go the reading. Go start start looking around the world and start applying it. If you have to go around the world, you may you should be able to go right down the street because it's actually everywhere. Th- this condition uh, on us. It's multiple layers and dimensions of this these conditions that all end up seemingly point to the same the same uh, it matter uh, of, of your destruction essentially. And whether that be, by, it, it doesn't really matter what mechanism. You know, it's the health, safety, and welfare is what they're using to destroy you. Uh, your need of, let's say, debt is a, is a, ends up being the focal point. Follow the money. If you follow that, you'll find all kinds of stuff. Uh, but it's not the only one. And so I don't, again, I, I don't know what to say more. To me, it would almost sound like I'm paranoid if I, <laughs> maybe it does sound like I'm a bit paranoid. Uh, to show you, it's everywhere, folks. We're, I tell you, it's, we're infiltrated and surrounded. But where I might be different than a paranoid, uh, I can point out how I can show you the tra- the lineage. Whether or not you want to you want to agree with that, that's not up for me to say. You're just going to have to read some more until you finally come up to the point of what I'm I'm really actually pointing out to people. And so, um, thank you for the uh, emails. I, I do appreciate that. Again, the feedback. I want to maybe go through this. It took maybe a little bit long, but to explain this. But uh, again, I'm, I'm really serious about the things I say. I really critique my stuff after, and yeah, I make a mistake here and there. I misspeak. Like one time, I think I said 18 U.S.C. 1981. It was supposed to be 42. That was the wrong section of code. It just misspeaks. It's the numbers that come to your head. I do those kinds of mistakes. I ask you to fix those. Be aware enough to fix those. And if you're not looking, it didn't matter, did it? If you're not looking for it, it didn't matter, did it? If it did, then fix it for me. Uh, and I, and you and you've been kind not to condemn me on all those little things. So that's cool. We have a we have at least have that that working together. But a lot of this really is on your on your own, and I'm try to hear. I try to be here to focus you where I can, even as comprehensive and as broad spectrum as I speak. There's uh, channels and threads of 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 uh, truth, the narrow paths. Uh, one uh, condition is really re- closely relates to another, and so you just got to get on one of them, and and you can start to see once you do that how all this nonsense that they're putting on us on us is is really denounced quickly. It's really dealt with quickly, but you have to do the dealing with it. Everybody will make excuses. Oh, it's that thing. It's the system. It's this law. It's this legal. These are people that have used, uh, known how to use you against yourself. And when you, they got you to say that, they, they defeated you. I can just tell you that. I, I don't know what else to say. That should be the self-evident truth all by itself. Uh, because we weren't born into this world uh, and it wasn't peaceful. We weren't born into a peaceful world. We are actually thrown out of that world. And when you didn't pay attention to that, then I don't know what to say. You need to refocus on that and figure out what part you're going to play. You're going to play the vic- willing victim, or are you going to do what you can to to resist being the victim, even though you're being victimized? You know, I hear lots of I hear lots of talk. I don't hear lots of I don't see lots of action. And we and in, it is your deed, indeed, folks, that that causes all of this. And again. It, just, if you didn't need it, you didn't want to hear it from me. The Libra Code said so, right? I think it's number one, isn't it? Number one, <laughs> first thing, right out of the gate. You knows them when you sees them. Okay, it doesn't say that, but that's my phrase. You knows them when you sees them. And people don't appreciate the power of that first line statement in that code, whether or not they can come wrap their head around the fact that it's it's applying. But even if it doesn't apply, they haven't looked around the world to see that's how it applies. Again, there's truths. Whether or not I can buy it 100% into the Bible is irrelevant to the truths it does contain. I better be. I, I better work myself to be aware of the truths that it's telling me. However, however, I don't understand the rest of it. And that's I say that because lots of people are supposedly familiar with the Bible and what it's saying, and and so that's that to me is just a source book of uh, of knowledge if I, if I have if I'm aware to it. It's not doesn't mean that any any bit of it I, I can I can actually wrap my mind around, uh, but the truths that are in there I better not disregard. That's the wise counsel, and I hope, boy, do I hope, it's on me if it's not, and that's why I ask you correct me if I'm wrong. 
I hope I can be that wise counsel for those of you that will do more than either reject me outright or agree with me and do nothing more. Because the wise counsel told tells me it's in your deeds. Indeed. Not all we say, not all we do, not all the logic you think you come up with. It's the faulty reasoning that you have that's a problem uh, that I see. And I was a little disappointed in the, one of the networks here. I put in a comment. And apparently, the uh, eventually, after a couple of responses, one of the posters saw the ra- reasoning cul-de-sac he was uh, moving himself into and deleted the whole post. Well, that's not real upstanding, is it? Not real honest. Even in the error, you can teach people, folks. And this is what I, you know, I, I try not to block anybody. I try not to, if I make a misstatement, I, I just leave it hanging out there and I'm embarrassed by it. But I leave it out there because it's going to, Hopefully someone else will look in and see. Don't don't make those mistakes. But to delete on this permanent to the internet to delete a position because it became a bad rationale that, that's pretty interesting. Like I said I'm really gonna I'm coming to a maybe a, a reckoning about this social social media so called. I'm not so sure about it at all. Haven't been, but I'm talking about my participation. What, what are we doing? If no one's really going to use this stuff, if you're going to disregard some of this stuff and not integrate with people that bring up things or work through the dis, the maybe the small differences, what are we doing? How are we going to get through this? I'm just asking. I'm thinking, how are we going to get through this? And you say, get through what? Well, then you're not paying attention. And I can't, I'm not speaking to you, I suppose. I'm not speaking to you. Somehow my mind makes these big, uh, comprehensive correlations. Uh, sometimes they're not so clear to a, maybe a lot of people. And sometimes I see people thinking and acknowledging that what I, you know, we all, that we're, I'm speaking to the choir, I understand that. But there's an underlying thing that's going on that I don't see a lot of people speaking to and then moving against or with. See, there's a double thing going on there. So, and I know it's esoteric, I can't even explain it. but. Your action to counter the evil you see is the eddy in the universe that people, examples to people what needs to be done. If they don't even see that, if you're not the one that brings that out, that's one less example to see the, the people that, that may not be capable, but to mimic what you're doing. They don't, you know, and this is the other problem. You can do things and just not know why, but you're just on the right, you're just inspired in the right way and you're doing it the right way, but you don't know why. But you got, you're doing. That can be an inspiration as well. And uh, the guys that I work with that do that are just are inspirational. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. I look at stuff I've told you before, and you and those of you that deal with me on the emails and have uh, and have talked with me, and you have your own projects across the country. You come up with stuff I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't. I'm not there to have to deal with it. But what you come up with, I've told you, pretty amazing, pretty neat stuff. I. Being educated myself on things that I didn't think were there because I was uh, some source, an authoritative source said that they're not, those things aren't dealt with that way and then find out that they are dealt with in certain places. Certain places. And so that is, was again fortifying. You have to deal with the thing you, where it is, that's in the place it sits. You have to make sure that you don't allow someone to put it in a place it doesn't belong. And this is we were talking real quickly. I think it might have been the UCY chat. I'd put in a text about, they talked about uh, land being taxed and all this. I said, well, that's only because it's ad valorem. And they were putting in market value. That's not, go look at your land, de- your land uh, 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 patent or land uh, deed or land warrant that is, that isn't a um, uh, conditioned one. Go look at the originating disposal and you tell me if that reservation to do that to the property is in there. And if it's not, they've committed a crime against the title. It's pretty simple. And then you don't have all this attachment that we, we, we get into. So I guess continuing the answer or not answer to the question, how can I offer uh, to help? What do you do? I'm telling you what you do. You don't disregard what I'm saying and don't criticize until you have done it and found out that, that the problem that, that it became a problem or that there was a little complexity and you needed to work that out. That means you're doing it. And then you solve it because it's not that hard a problem. Getting to the truth is not that difficult. Accepting a lie is really simple. How's that one? 
And I see walk people walking around with a big chip on their shoulder about accepting a lie and don't actually believe themselves to be innocent. Don't actually believe that there's some paperwork that proves that whomever is coming against you doesn't have that right, no matter what they say, what costume they wear. That was the interesting thing about the societies we've made in the recent uh, couple hundred years. And then the system that we now are told should be in writing needs to be in writing so that there's nobody that can uh, use their opinion to circumvent it. And this is exactly the answer that we use, the law that everyone seems to be so abrasive, abrasive to, this particularly this land disposal law, and all the things that wrap up in all that. That's what we assert, assert against, the direct black and white assertions against what the ad hoc attack is. And if you're not coming at it that way, you will be defeated. You will just, or waste, they love to waste your time more than anything else. You think you're doing something. And so, this is a, given nothing to speak to, I speak in the generality. I do give you all the same truths. And if you've dealt with me, you know I talk in the same truth back to you, but specific to you, the thing that is your problem. And to help you the best, give, you need to decide on what's a problem for you. And we will address it. And if it's in my skill set, if it's my experience, if it's in my knowledge, even if it's in a, a little bit outside my knowledge, but I may have some uh, tools, I will. I've never, never not offered it to anybody. In, in fact, I was just talking with somebody who, you know, they get into all this patriot nonsense. So, oh, this, that, and the other, and all these nonsense paperwork that they got to do, working with people that don't think they got it understood. And I just asked one question. I said, why are you, why are you, why did you do that? Oh, well, I was told. Uh, did you find a source for why? No, I, just, I was just told to do that. Well, then why did you, why did you commit yourself to put on a millstone around your neck by claiming you were anything, in particular, where no one asked? You get into all these pre-filings that you don't need to interact with anybody, and you start causing yourself trouble. Well, this was working through a deal where it was talking to a divorce case. I was called to help someone who I thought was in a land disposal matter. I find out it's about a divorce decree. Well, my mind blew up for a little bit. I don't do that. That's, I don't, can't say I don't do that. What I'm saying is I don't do that. But there's some underlying due process things that I did could contribute. Couldn't answer the problem, absolutely, but I could contribute the part I could contribute. I'm not a, div I don't do divorces. That's, well, we kind of do divorces, but it's a different way, isn't it? When there's a, a divorcement going on between your government and you not doing their obligation and duty. I guess we could look at it that way. It's all pretty simple that way. But no, a an out-of-state divorce decree, how am I supposed to, to deal with that? I don't even understand it, except I do understand foreign judgments. I understand that there's a process behind it all. And those are in your statutes. So what did I say? Go to your statutes in the state you're supposed to be doing it. Find out about what it takes to go to foreign judgment. You'll see the due process they require in there. And you'll have begin to see what the elements are you need to describe uh, in your paperwork response back. But only when you get the point, uh, the, the process, not before. And so then there's some certain things I could do. So pretty soon I'm off of the decree and I'm sitting in the due process side. And you can too. So when you understand the due process of what, how this notice thing, opportunity, time, and place works, the questions aren't that difficult. You, sit, you start out with the basics and you see if all of that's complied with. And if it's not, you just stay right there where they didn't comply. If you're the one, the object. If you are the mover, then you better, if you're the petitioner, then you, or you, you have a position to move. Whatever, judicial, administrative, a neighbor with a neighborly com problem, you position your, you make your position in fact. If it's not sufficient, you have to fix that. Don't assume that you're right. Don't assume the judge come back and says you're moving, we're moving to dismiss your case, or someone comes in and says you're arbitrary, you're, you're frivolous in discussion. Don't consider yourself to be right. Go test it. Maybe you are wrong. In fact, the one I was working with was completely wrong, and I was able to finally get around and explain based on a narrow point how that was the fact, and focusing on the underlying foundation of the understanding of the laws and the due process rules and how that all works to show how the better path was supposed to be taken. So, again, I'm still back on to answering the question. This, or the position, I can offer you more better, more better, uh, on a particularity. And that also, there's another underlying uh, problem. A lot of people like to get you in an argument, and they like to twist your words or move you around. 
And so they just continue the nonsense and delay in time and lack of understanding. And they might want to make it sound like you're, like you, like you don't know what you're talking about. And it seems to exalt them, I suppose. Uh, when you come with your purpose and you stay on point, uh, then we don't have that problem either. And we get more efficient in how we communicate. A lot more efficient. And so if you're not in it, you're not with that, it seems like it's a, you know, a big blizzard of stuff going on. And, uh, there's really a narrow path and you stay on the path and it's calm on that path. It's, well, it's, it's calm to the point of what, how you respond to the problem and what tries to come and enter the roadway, if you will, the pathway. Uh, and then your response to that. And you can get all triggered over that. You can get all de- dejected. You can go into your uh, fetal, let's blame the Jews response. You can do, let's name, let's blame the le- leftists or the liberal, whatever. This, let's blame the alt-right. You can do all that. Or you can respond to the problem in the proper way. And it's, And a lot of times when you're on the path, there is no problem. There really isn't a problem. Uh, and I'll just let you know. Why isn't this a problem? Well, how do I know that? Well, I've got three equity suits right now, and they've been in default one over a month. And this is on 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 things where the governments have duties to respond. So what I'm looking at is two things. You don't have a law to follow because there is no law to follow. So so let's call that out. Or uh, we're we've looked at the truth and the fact that the government hasn't have the power that it does. And there is going to be a reckoning soon. So you can choose which way you want to go. Either one to me seems like a big victory. We either come to terms with the fact we're not where we were told and these people around us are harming us and they har- and they intend to harm us and that's all they will do and so we have to, we have an action to take. Or you find out that the, you do the remedies in black and white and we don't have to go to violence and force that everyone seems to believe that if they talk about not going to violence and force that that's not going to happen. That's his, Historically, you're on the revolutionary wheel, and I've been telling you to break that. You better involve yourself. You better involve yourself to the point you can avoid violence, notwithstanding the violence that's being put against you now, because these people are criminals in the offices, and it is universal. It's global, this stuff. Anybody who who can't come to terms with that is really someone with their head in in the act behind the woodshed acme bucket of sand. Where is peace on earth, folks? I've heard it's inside from those that are in Zen, but I don't know. I think the peace I have now is the understanding that we don't live in peace. And let's make a pathway that we may have to invigorate ourselves and do things short of being violent that are within the constraints of rationale, within the constraints of peace, that to the point of not being peaceful, we have to know we're thrown out of our peaceful settlement to go do what we want but because there's a disquiet, a, dis, a disease in societies, we have something to do to bring it back. I don't know how that's so hard to, to understand. Oh, so if I'd ever got to the point, uh, as I look up, get off and talk and talk and talk. Uh, donations, folks. The last week of the month of February, when Grimner asks, reminds us it's uh, costs for hardware time, I thank you very much for the don- generous donations we got last week, whether or not it was on my request, whether or not you felt felt Phil, uh, Puxitani Phil did it for you, uh, whether or, or not it came from someplace else. Thank you for the donations. We still have a little shortfall. So any of you all that can, uh, again, it doesn't take one. Uh, I mean, to me, a dollar maybe going through PayPal is ridiculous. I don't know what the fees are. I don't do all that. Maybe that's kind of like a ridiculous thing. Maybe up it to five or ten bucks. But it won't take a few more of you, but to cover the cover the just the costs of the hardware uh, that Grimner provides that allows all this to happen, and that he keeps going. I don't understand uh, what the what the question would be about that, and all the time the value that he puts in behind the scenes to keep everything running. But uh, again, thank you for all the donations to the to the that came in for this week. If we can do it, maybe one more week, uh, cough up what you can, and we can go over the top of the costs. Uh, just for the hardware, and we go for another year. Uh, we don't have to consider it anymore. Just keep moving like we have been, and maybe better. Hopefully, you know, maybe more, better insights come, and we get better, better out out uh, outflows of information and or knowledge or or application, and uh, you start to actually do these things and see for yourself whether they they work. 
or not. I, mean, I, I would say once I've given you for myself the information I provide, it's pretty quick to go to the place that shows the support for the, if it's just an idea or a notion, there's uh, places to go read to prove it out beyond the notion that it's there. And then it'll be your decided, uh, you have to decide whether or not it's the function, the instrument, the tool that you need for what you're going to do. Again, as I say with the long-term view, you're going to defeat every appeal. Whether or not justice comes to you by that, you defeat the appeals. When you defeat the appeals, then the guy that you're telegraphing the information to starts to see the the long-term problem that he's going to have if he tries to do it other than shut up. And that's what I'm starting now to see in multiple cases through that that we've been filing. The government just shuts up. And that should be concerning to you for a lot of reasons. That should be really concerning to people. Someone's hacked the system, and they keep hacking the system, and blaming it on someone else, and we don't have the fortitude to uh, to stop it. But we'll divide ourselves, and we'll conquer ourselves, and we'll fight with amongst each other, and we'll argue with me, and argue with yourselves, and talk about things that are just really, I don't get it. Folks. I don't even want to talk about it being stupid. I guess it's important to, the, to anybody who's talking about it, but uh, for what? I more thought I'm looking around and I I am just astonished that I still live in a schoolyard somehow. I thought we would be we'd be all glowed up, but it doesn't look like it. There's a global schoolyard. I made a comment on Twitter. I think it was they were talking about the children and this and that, but with this gun thing going on, and uh, that you know one day that the Tide Pods are being eaten by the same teenagers that are now being the guides to uh, gun uh, control policy. And they're talking about the children doing that. I said, well, the children are running the world. You're seeing the evidence of it. The children are running the world. They're in, they're in grown up, they're in grown up clothes. But you can't tell me what I'm looking at isn't a big giant global schoolyard. The way we treat each other and the way we're going on and the cliques we get into and the divisions that we have and the, the dirt clods we throw at each other and whatever all else is going on. The bullies that are in the world. I'm just astonished. I'm, I'm just not not uh, doesn't doesn't compute, folks. Doesn't compute. 2001 doesn't compute. Yes, Dave. So our lives are hacked. Uh, we don't understand it. We would rather fight amongst each other because of the glitch in the prim in the matrix, uh, instead of working out how that's going on and working on how the. Uh, uh, the those that are in the seats of decision in the government have used that, learned to figure out how to make it work at levels we may not even re- appreciate. Even myself, I'm looking in deeply how deep it goes. It just is other things that are always sitting there that you can't quite see, but you know that they're they got to be supported by something else that isn't quite yet exposed as well. But we continue, uh, we continue to uh, feed into that. However, we do it, the excuses we have, and I guess I'm here behind a woodshed to. Just, just be a voice against our complicity with all of this nonsense, uh, and don't allow it to be the hack. You see, we see the uh, the evidence. Uh, the uh, Russian thing, the evidence of the hack not being a hack, but the Seth Rich murder of someone on the inside getting the information out, and they focus on the wrong party and the wrong method. It is is a is a model of how they're doing your whole life. I don't understand how people don't see this as well. Uh, but so we just getting let's move on to the tabs. Now I think I've said plenty on. Uh, on ho- hopefully uh, you're encouraged to send uh, questions, not discouraged to send them. Uh, understand to keep your your questions on on a thing you really important to you, and then we'll move a lot quicker on that for you. Uh, is how this kind of works. I can't take on everybody's stuff obviously, but I can maybe help help you move on uh, on those things and. Because there's so few people doing anything really, uh, it's been, I'm lounging, I'm a lounge lizard. i got the sun beating on me and I've almost got lizard skin leather now because I've been in the sun so long because the crickets are out. There's not much going on. Not that I want more than I can handle because I'm always, I'm, I'm up to my eyeballs with it now. But I'm, my point is, you know, there's, the crickets are rule, ruling the day and they, they ought not to. So getting into the hacks, we have some more coming. Uh, those with T-Mobile, we did some of this problem with the T-Mobile, and they were giving away the numbers, uh, your numbers, your SIM cards. And it's, well, there's another one, a bigger problem uh, for you to know. I think it's the product service uh, section of the behind the woodshed. Critical, 
Critical, critical, T-Mobile bug allowed hackers to hijack users' accounts. This was not the SIM problem where the government, where the company or the government handed them your SIM number uh, because they asked you, asked, asked uh, T, uh, T-Mobile for it. This is literally a patch, uh, T-Mobile bug. You need to get the patch if you have a T-Mobile service. My, my thought about this is I don't know uh, how this all works, but you're going to find these patches, your, uh, these uh, problems in lots of these uh, services. So, again, the uh, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, to my mind, is always prevalent with this so-called hack preference to actual reality. Uh, they, the Russians hacked the DNC. It wasn't Seth Rich who walked out with a, a thumb drive with it. All right, so that's how they get you to focus on the wrong stuff and, and don't really consider uh, who else is the players behind the scenes. And in and, and on that, uh, the, based on how this government is, uh, is controlling, you, again, you, you think that you, you think there was going to be a big change. I, I told you, no, it's, we're going we're looking for a little bitty mouse hole for the stuff I do. We hopefully we'll get some justice in that. It still actually hasn't happened. Uh, we still have the opportunity, but really this this administration isn't any different. Notwithstanding, it's been attacked from the inside. It seems that maybe that was all a plan too. You see what rolls out of that isn't any much better. But they consider they continue this hack a meme condition that you think it seems to be. It's like um, what was it? Uh, oh, fake news. Didn't that just used to be called spin? See, they just changed the word, uh, and so now it's hack. And so the Russians are doing it because of this global nonsense that we put on them. But uh, so the United States and Mueller uh, comes out, or this other guy with Mueller, uh, not Mueller, but this other guy talking about the um, the Russian hackers. Hacking our electrical uh, electoral yeah electrical system, our elector uh, electoral system. U.S. indictment not proof of Russian state meddling. Kremlin says to that indictment of 13 Russians and three Russian companies accused of meddling in the 2016 United States presidential election campaign. It did not contain any proof that the Russian state has been involved in such activity. Again, this is the cover uh, for the failure of the United States government. Uh, this is never probably going to come to anything. If I understand how this works, these, the, 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 the Russian the government's been sanctioned by the United States government anyway. The United States government's just this big bully. Uh, and let me just remind you, the 13 uh, uh, Russians, even if they did do it, only put in a couple thousand dollars and were to, able to defeat a multi-billion dollar effort uh, by Hillary Clinton. But let me remind you just one other thing, and this is the thing that kind of got me about the, uh, the, the post in the forum that I was doing. Uh, in the network I was posting against someone's discussion about they want to go to the left-right paradigm, the Democrats, Republicans, on who votes for president. If you don't vote, then you're not going to get what you want. Uh, the elect, remember, the electors are the ones uh, that elect the president, I think the vice president. And uh, so we're not talking about a, a, the mass social meddling, are we? Does everybody miss that? Uh, they would have had to go and they would have had evidence on just the electors because those are the ones. That, you think the Russians are stupid enough to make a couple thousand dollars go uh, go outside of what they wanted to target if they actually looked at it that way? Or well, they should have looked at it that way. I would look at it that way. Won't I have to just influence the electors, folks? What was that number? Point zero 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 one six percent of the population votes for the president of the United States? So this is a big uh, fiasco, but th- I wanted to focus on the hacking. The hack, they keep talking about hacking. It's not hacking at all. There's a reality underneath that there's people with arms and legs on the ground that are actually causing things to happen or not happen. Uh, and people are, are keeping the narrative. They keep discussing the narrative on this, uh, that, uh, wants to drive, uh, this, this, uh, other people have done it, uh, hacked our system. It's not hacking at all. Uh, the Russians came out and said it doesn't mean anything. Uh, again, uh, remember that the they can indict a ham sandwich and get a conviction. That came to my mind right off the bat. But remember what I talked about last last week regarding the uh, prosecution. Uh, they they are a mindset apart, and it may not even be rested in the law. And uh, the the attorneys don't want to de- defend anybody uh, with real just defenses across the board. Whether anybody wants to believe with, to, on me on that, they want to. I guess people want to. Uh, they want to say, "Well, no, it's it's just a little bit, no, just us." And if you don't, I can't I can't change your mind, so you're not going to agree with me. And so I guess I can be an insult. To, my credibility goes down in your eyes if you don't agree with me on this. But the proof is out there to see. And this U.S. indictment of 13 Russians uh, contains no allegations. They <laughs> influence the outcome for those that have read the indictment. And not only are the Russians not are just you know again, this is just a big uh, setup psyop. We can keep buying into this or we can call it out and or move on. Uh, 
uh, and do things that uh, shows that we're not being persuaded by any of this nonsense, notwithstanding the power of the federal persecutors uh, to, to cause a misdirection of your attention and misdirect who is actually causing all the trouble. We can remain silent to it, or we can start to call it out better. Uh, this left-right paradigm, this uh, party paradigm. See, I, remind, I want to also remind you, uh, we have a lawsuit in 2013, J Jefferson, Mining District, Jefferson Mining District versus Kitzhopper, 2013. Type it out, get it on Justia, you'll see it happen. You'll see we've done it. Go look and we say we, bought, we sued the Bar Association. Those, those attorneys uh, don't, don't mean you any well. They didn't answer. Default. It's binding for anybody who wants to go look what a default judgment means. This is clear. I don't have any opinion beyond that. There's a persecution and it's being promoted by attorneys. Go look at your government. Go look at who advises your government, those in your government, if they're not attorneys. Go look at all the laws that you live under. I'm not focusing on that. They've hacked the system, folks. And so they keep pointing to someone else. Remember, anybody who points out, they got three fingers pointing back. You should be looking real strong at the one doing the pointing. They have the burden, folks. I keep trying to tell you that too. The burden's not on the burden isn't on your presumption that you they've applied the uh, on your agreement with it. The burden's on them to prove it. And you just got to stand there and say, no, no, I'm innocent. Where did you get? First of all, where did you get the power to trespass my character and then to apply that? Where's all this defamation you're doing here? Well, how do you get up? And I don't just defamation's one word. There's all kinds of stuff they're doing. Why don't we have that thought in our mind? Why do we carry these millstones around our neck? When I talked about this just weeks ago, same stuff. Uh, the, the system will point the finger, will create and fabricate stuff, and uh, we don't we don't call them out. Uh, social media has the capacity to do that, that calling out, that shaming, if you will. And I, but no one r wrestles that down into uh, point, bullet points of authority, of fact, and then goes in and actually moves against this and makes a more formal public record. As I was trying to do with the FOIA, you know, we can solve the the Portland police problem of interfering, obstructing with producing evidence if you just make this statement. And if you read the statement that I contributed, it completely answers uh, the whole uh, the whole list of three questions they want to ask you. In the, but 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 it does it before they get to put that paperwork out. Now, if that's going to be the, since that is the case and that answers it, you're not going to get that paper, are you? And if you've then sub, sub, sub created a FOIA that actually traps them because you've done something else right before that, like sent them a communication, so that you know there's something in the record on the subject matter about what you're going to ask for the FOIA, and they return that we have no documents, not only do they can't not send you the three questions because you've answered it in your last, one of the statements that's required in the FOIA anyway, but you've now loaded the record with something they should have produced and they don't. And so when they don't, that's a fraud. And you catch them. And there goes your appeal. They've lost that appeal. Well, is that my opinion? No, that's what I've done, folks. I don't, we've done it. I've done it. And uh, what did they do? They sent me all the documents I needed to write lickety split. I caught them on the fraud that I knew they were going to make. And, and now then they made it. And now they got caught. If you don't think these people are stupid, uh, and you can exploit that, the b dumb beast of burden they are, no, you, we would rather argue. We would rather not work together to pull this together. We would not rather even acknowledge uh, on the so-called social media that there's any contributions whatsoever. I, I look at this, all the things I kind of contribute to people, supposedly know what they're doing, none of them respond back to me. Why? I'm just talking about how you do stuff in the law that I do all the time that is successful. Why, why wouldn't I get a response from them? And I shouldn't say all, because I just got a response from one of the kids, Lori, Lori, back there in uh, the uh, in England, he got himself, uh, he won an extradition. I responded to him. I congratulated him on that. That's a big deal. And we had a little, I wanted to see the paperwork that said that the United States prisons are so bad, or don't even met, meet medieval standards. Now, there was a little embellishment on that, but there is a statement by the court in England that says the United States court, uh, jails are not fit uh, for uh, human <laughs> inhabitation. Folks, if you don't know how powerful that statement is for you, I don't know what to say. And so it hasn't been yet been printed. It's supposed to be a secret type thing over there, uh, whatever. I don't know what they've done, some deal. Uh, but I asked him, and he responded, that he'll send me, when he gets it, he'll send me the, the documents that explain uh, the British courts have found that the United States uh, penal system, uh, jails, are, are just abhorrent. 
No. What, what does that mean? Well, why don't you think about what I've told you about your right of allocution, notwithstanding the verdict against you in any 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 type of uh, prison that you might go to. This is start using it. Is it going to work? I don't know, but you certainly set up a record that starts to expose what the real problem is. That you live in an open air prison and it ain't, it doesn't even ma- meet, it doesn't even meet the standards of a, of the dog pound. But they'll indict you and they'll get their convictions with stupid juries, grand juries that don't have a clue. Don't, don't understand again the commercial nexus of this all. They'll make them fabricate terms and no one understands the jurisdiction of them. Don't challenge it. There's no legal profession that'll do it. And we walk into this, so it empowers the, the police to be the big club that they've become. The enforcers, the police, the law enforcers, they become. You know, remember, the law, the word law is kind of a fictional thing to begin with. It's the law that they declare and that the system will back them up on uh, as they have hacked your system to allow themselves to do this to you, and you keep accepting. Tennessee sheriff raid 23 shops alleging selling, quote, synthetic drug CBD. Now, I, just on the title, folks, I go on all this. I'm not going to go to the story. It's got some convolutions in it. I'm not quite sure of the whole point. But the title, Synthetic Drug, CBD, isn't that a natural extract? And so here we see what I've, t- I've said that they do to the miners, what the attorneys will not stop. They will not frame the problem correctly. They will not go to test. They go coast to coast on this thing. They will allow this thing called a synthetic judge the drug, and they will not argue or, or point out that that was a, a fraud in the indictment. A question relating to the question of the email, uh, w- w- would that be a motion to suppress? I suppose. That's inside the case. You know, what would you do for the defendants? Would you do a motion to suppress? How would you attack the judge? And the, Well, you can't. You're not going to attack anybody in there. But in this case, it would be a motion to suppress. But my point would be, if it's a fraud in the indictment, why don't you challenge the indictment up front and not even get involved with the argument? There's a couple of mechanisms within the legal side, and there's a couple of mechanisms of pre-plea remedies on the law side. Why don't we know that? Why, why do I have people arguing with me over over those things? I, I, I don't know. It's kind of it actually is kind of funny, uh, but sad at the same time. So here we have uh, again synthetic drug quote synthetic drug on something that's a natural byproduct of a plant, and uh, now, when you parse this thing out and you do not use the word marijuana, but go to cannabis and or what land it was on, and and then I, as I would say, bring up the right to produce the production side that didn't show that you didn't have the right uh, reserved to the government for any of these things to produce. You start moving these things through, and all of a sudden it starts to complicate the prosecution's uh, position and their cops' position quite a bit. Uh, I'm saying this before, and you don't want to find yourself in this condition because this is how you're going to have to be treated. And there's not going to be any attorney that's going to argue out of this. Argue out of this. Why? Because they want to maintain your plea agreement, and they want to maintain status quo, which is bar member, bar association control of your society. It's like you don't know the law, so we made legal to help you out of it, and they did. And you said, okay. So, uh, word to the word to wise. I've been telling you about this thing uh, with this uh, legalization. It's really a problem in my mind. Uh, the cops already have a problem with how, or the, the, the government has a, has a problem for us about how they redesignate things. Uh, but now CBD is now considered a synthetic, uh, synthetic drug. And I, I don't know, folks. Look at the administrative stuff. I don't see how that can even be possible. Remember, it's not even cannabis, is it? Did, did you catch my mistake there? I, it was, it was a, a mistake, not a mistake. It's not even cannabis you can get CBD from, is it? What is it, folks? You got to keep you got to keep keep everything in its order, keep everything on its track and its facts and its own facts. That's how you think about this. If you start putting everything in its own facts, you'll see the picture, the outcome of this is not something that's predictable until you see all the facts and then it's known. It's not a question. CBD is being derived from what? Hemp, right? Not not cannabis or marijuana. It doesn't matter. Well, I don't know, but I think if you start to look at it as a natural byproduct of a plant that's not actually uh, psychoactive, then I think we have a different a different position to take. And it's a fraud. The law becomes a fraud, and then it also becomes a breach on your on your property disposal. I mean, how many times are you going to have to show that the government's completely wrong on this point? But are you showing that they're completely wrong? Is crickets to my mind. So what about these sheriffs that go about you know protecting uh, you? 
from yourself and from making up stuff. Well, they make up stuff. And I told you, you can just look at this completely within the context of an occupying force, and it starts to make a lot more sense, at least to me, whether or not anybody else uh, it says it reduces my credibility, uh, which now I'm, I didn't want to even talk to that, but that doing the big leap about my credibility about all this is kind of an interesting uh, uh, thing that I've now in my craw this morning. Uh, and in the last couple of days, I started to think about it because you don't agree with me, and I'm talking in general, if you don't agree with me, and all of a sudden now my credibility goes down, is you really have to rethink that position. Because I don't, and I don't really take take it on myself, but I'm more concerned for your prejudice, your uh, lack of awareness, and your more importantly, your lack of ability to get to the awareness that you you need to to start seeing how this stuff is all connected. Uh, these cops are really sitting in a police, uh, in, a, in a military sense. Uh, this shooting, and in, in, I'll get back quickly. A couple stories that popped up. Um, the the this is an agenda that's being promoted. It's being protected by the system. Again, the bar association sits there to control it. I've told you how they they took away the given that there would be a potential that was never spoken to the mental illness that they, everyone agrees sits there as a potential which should have been a part of the defense. Uh, but what was the actuality going on? Uh, this right after the story, the agenda pops up. Now, what is the sheriff over there? The name Israel. If you don't make the connections, the global connections here, folks, I don't know what to tell you. We need to be able to defeat any threat, says this Sheriff Israel. Sheriff deputies will now carry AR-15 rifles on school grounds after Florida shooter Nicholas Cruz killed 17 with the same semi-automatic weapon. Maybe I have it wrong. Aren't the AR-15s in a military seat, aren't they also automatic? So this would be a misspeak on maybe multiple planes. But here's to get to the point. We need to be able to defeat any threat. So the sheriff is wants now to, and is going to have the, the sheriff the deputies have AR-15s on the same school grounds for protection. In the report and the story, he talks about defeating every, any threat. Uh, any threat? So here's a here's a position that is also stated in the con in the in, in the in this story that he says. So they, his statement is that we need ways to better secure schools. And he also said every school in the nation should have a school resource deputy with an AR-15. Then you hear in the story a little bit later down, it says the school resource officer and sheriff's deputy Scott Peterson was on campus and armed at the time of the attack. Do we hear this record, the vinyl scratch here? What? Defeat any threat with an AR-15? There was an officer on the grounds? Yeah, the story's now coming out, if you haven't heard. The officer was outside and would not go in. He never went in. Officer on duty filmed doing nothing during the Florida shooting. And then it got worse. There was a report. Four of Sheriff Scott Israel's deputies waited outside Douglas Hyde during school shooting. Four. They all waited outside. Well, they waited for so-called reinforcements. And now the two forces now, the two police forces are bickering over why they didn't go in. And the little hog dude uh, steps up and says, well, who would run it? The, the one that was supposed to be the reporter whose, I guess, father is FBI and who wanted to work with CNN and looks to me to be a, you know, be the answer man. Uh, he says, well, who would run in, into the into the school to to protect those kids. Okay, well, you just defeated uh, the sheriff's anticipation, haven't you? And uh, my observation, I don't know, folks, I just look at it from my standpoint. I'm a teacher. I'm in front of a, a bunch of kids who are, you know, my wards, if you will. I, I'm in charge of their future by what I can tell them and how much I can inspire them. Oh, wait a minute, maybe I wouldn't be a teacher. At any rate, let's just pretend I'm in there wanting to inspire them, and I get some. I hear some crack, 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 and some bullets. What would I want? An eraser? Oh wait, but those are gone too. Uh, a whiteboard pen, or do I want myself a 45 uh, semi-auto? And I think going down there, uh, hearing this guy coming down the hall, and uh, some little uh, quick little angel pops up and says, "Do you want this whiteboard pen to stop this guy? You can stick him in the eye, or do you want this 45?" I think I'm going to choose the uh, the 45. So if I'm going to choose the 45, uh, me, myself, I'm going to choose the semi-auto 45, then I just want it with me, period. I don't want to have to wait for the little angel that might be busy that day. So for me, 
it seems there's no other choice here. You have to, if you will, fight fire with fire. And you have to be responsible. I don't even know why this thing is not. You get a gun, you have to be responsible. There's no two ways about it. And I guess until you get a gun, and you don't go through that, I mean truly go through it. I've told you about my little journey through that years and years ago. It's not so simple when you start to really think about what this what this tool can do and what its function is. Notwithstanding the misinterpretation of what the second was all about, doesn't matter. That we make big hay over these guns. We're not looking at a lot of things that could be the alternative problem, which I'm not going to talk about. But the official says we're here to we're from the government. We're here to protect you, and all his guys are outside, not protecting anyone. It's really. Well, it's indicative of crickets, isn't it? It's indicative of the sickness that we have in this country. I don't know what else to really think about that. But what causes this power in these police enforcers that are really, in my mind, cowards anyway? What would you do with it when you have that weapon and you know that there's people getting killed? Are you going to not go in to help protect? Are you going to be so stupid as to think you're Superman and just throw yourself at the guy? No, no. There's a certain approach, isn't there? Whether or not you end up getting there, you end up, don't you, just step up and do what it takes? Uh, maybe some of you don't. I haven't found that to be myself, though, for me. Been in a couple of situations where not quite a school shooting, not even quite a mass killing, not even a killing, but a threat that comes to me. And it seemed to be pretty pretty automatic I was going to protect myself. Really not myself. It was I'm responding to a danger to the to everyone. So I don't know that's my my reality. I don't know about maybe all y'all that would, would agree that a cop stays outside when kids are getting killed inside and has the training uh, and hopefully the, they had just had a drill, folks, a tactical training to go in and do what you can. If that means uh, you get wounded or killed, I guess that's part of the game, isn't it? That's part of getting in that kitchen, isn't it? You rely, make a reliance by people thinking that you're there to protect and then you don't. That's a pretty big lie. And that's that's the cops. They'll make stuff up. And this guy comes out, this uh, Israel dude, comes out and says, I, I, I'm an, I've been an amazing, uh, an amazing force. Uh, directing the, 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 the sheriff's department. They actually exalt themselves in these deficiencies. Where, where might this come from? Do public unions make pol police more dangerous? I don't know if a public union, a police union is involved in this case. I'm just saying here that a story pops up. That, uh, I've told you before, if you want to go after these police and how they're doing, uh, the, uh, how they kill you out in the streets and, and they make checks and balance and this and that, you have to get involved with their policy. Uh, well, underlying that is this story. Well, the police unions are actually maybe in charge of that. And uh, there's a whole uh, conniving uh, going on behind the scenes to make it so it's about impossible to get out these cops for whatever they do. Now, I was told a long time back that there was nobody in America that was not account held accountable to their wrong. But what they did is they just removed the wrong. There's just no way to be wrong. What is that example but the Libra Code? It's only the most heinous, heinous act, typically, that exposes the exposes the regime, the occupying force, that any soldier will ever get uh, whacked for, uh, or, or, or punished or hand slapped over. So do public unions make police more dangerous? I think you need to read this, get this link and read it. See, for those of you that want to stop people, cops and costumes uh, that make up these excuses. Uh, that, see if, they, if if you have a in it in you to stop this uh, for you for those around you, uh, go in and make sure that these policies and these uh, these uh, police unions are put back in their place so that they don't become the danger to society they claim that they're uh, eliminating. Again, the other style of lie, right? It's just really pretty simple methodology. Another question, as we brought up as I brought up last week, and we continually bring up the silent in your face question about mental health. Uh, written by Jan Rapp, uh, John Rappaport, Mass Shootings and Psychiatric D Drugs, The Connection. Now, what's interesting, this doesn't point out that the drugs are doing it uh, directly. And so, again, there's a nuance about how this that he found years ago and puts it now out for everyone to use if, if they want to, given you want to make this issue important, whether or not it's to defend uh, the attack 
through the gun control uh, addressment and then the Second Amendment, how that doesn't really answer the Second Amendment uh, thing that says no one's supposed to infringe, right? No one shall not infringe. pretty clear that they are trying to. How the purpose of the Second Amendment had nothing to do with any of what you're seeing. How people are using that, it doesn't take away everyone else's rights either. But more to the point of the extra nuance of this is that there's these drugs that cause conditions that cause this. And if you're not one, uh, take this on as someone who finds it important. It will argue against someone whether or not the bump stock is, is real or not, uh, a, a, a cause or the cosmetics. You want to argue that minutia? You're going to lose the argument. You start showing that there's things out there that are not being dealt with uh, that are as plausible, uh, that there's a combination of things more importantly here. And so there's bigger issues, societal issues that need to be addressed than looking after trying to uh, believe you can take away an antecedent right to protect yourself against the government that says I'm here to protect you. Uh, then we're going to get you're going to get the tyranny that we've allowed. But John goes on and talks about all these companies about these antidepressants, how uh, how they might work through what really that there there be, can become the the beginnings of the cause. They give your body, they affect your body in certain ways that you, you can't escape the torment that they put you under, which should be in the data sheet as well. That I think is another element to all this that, again, as I talked last week, is is being thrown under, under the bus, uh, at least, uh, and not not addressed. We have the, the other thing, the mentality, going back to the cops, uh, the craziness of, of all this. And, and whether you're on drugs or not, we don't know that the cops are not on these drugs. And also affected that this little story came up, Florida school officer filmed on a rooftop pretending to kill children. It's only a six-second video. Actually, part of me says that I'd want to see a whole lot more of that video on what was really going on, but the gentleman on the roof does look like he's in a you know, heavy coat, which I thought was kind of interesting for Florida, uh, on the roof. And he looks like he, to me, it looks like he's pulling back, he's drawing back a bow. Uh, arm stretched out and pulls back. It could be that he's sighting a, pretending to sight a rifle down into the courtyard. Uh, but the point is, what are these these cops? They're, they're not. They're hiding out out in by the cars and not going in. And then they stand on the roofs and pretend to pick the kids off. Now this happened a while back. It didn't happen since Florida. Uh, but this is the psychology of the people that we're putting in to protect their kids. And my thought on this, as we've been going through. Really, what's the answer to all this? Is take your kids out of the public school. I, I really don't see a better option. Uh, I've been of that mindset for many, many decades. After I watched the uh, distinction, the difference between uh, being, it, it happened upon a teaching, you know, having a, uh, someone come home on, a, on a being sick, and uh, they still had schoolwork to do, and in 20 minutes could do a whole, literally could do a whole day's worth of schoolwork. And I realized, wait a minute, this schoolwork is not, this schoolwork's dragged out. That means that for 20 minutes you're doing the work, and then the rest of the time they're being they're being uh, wasting their time. And and I know to, I know homeschoolers that boy they go right through that 20 minutes and they do a couple more hours of that, or they go through an hour and then they take a break and they do their thing, family thing, whatever they're doing, however you do it. And now they have even more contact to to material that they didn't have at the time that would make it even more advan advantageous. The question is, why do public, private in learning institutions don't have the murder, or the, the mass murder type problem, as the as the um, uh, private schools, and then even less the homeschool. And, and so we have a whole range of things that we may be may be looking at. Well, interestingly, on these antidepressants that John was talking about, and now this other news story coming out as well at the same time as all this thing works, uh, you start to see that the numbers start to correlate to give us an idea of how many of these people that are taking these psychiatric drugs would be available to be going to these schools and doing this kind of thing. As a, we find that a, a antidepressants work, a major study says, and we start looking through this major study, and they, uh, if you look very, very carefully, they say they work, but they say they only work for a narrow band of use, which is adults for a short-term issue. If you missed that little point, you, you miss out the fact they've fraudulently omitted to talk about all this younger people that are put on permanently or somewhat permanently uh, and the effects for them. And I'm going to go, again, like read and read and read, uh, but you can read it yourself. You can go find it on the Internet. 
uh, the uh, they came out right during this right at t- on time on cue to say that antidepressants work, and in fact, it does not speak to what happened in Florida whatsoever. But uh, the anybody who reads over the top of it uh, would just claim, okay, see, well, that it can't be, it can't be the antidepressants. Maybe that's why the attorney didn't do a, a, a defense, which would essentially would have made the record to out it all, wouldn't it? I, I would think. Well, we won't know, will we? And they said here to promote it, push the promotion here. Uh, the study is a final answer to a long-standing controversy about whether antidepressants work on depression. Okay, they make it sound like it's all-encompassing, but it only applies to adults for short-term use. How many, how many people are, are, are that you hear doing mur- uh, mass murders or, or anybody else having trouble are actually adults on short-term use? And you'll start seeing the fallacy of this report, but it comes out just in time for the masses to uh, stay that way. They want they want to promote that this is okay. I, I think this is a crime. I absolutely think it's a crime what we see here, and the promo, and the promotion for it is uh, uh, well, it's the media promotion. What can I say? What, I don't know what else to say. There's really nothing more to talk to. Uh, and we go move on to things that affect us and health. And the officials that are coming out to validate certain issues and condemn things. Uh, we find if we do deeper study that they're not necessarily so uh, so good. And I mean, I've 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 told you, uh, if it hadn't have been for an antibiotic, I would not be alive today. So I see that the again, medicine can be a tool. I guess I, most everything is a tool. How do you use it? They're saying here, an adult, for a short time, on an antidepressant, has a benefit to be derived from that. It doesn't mean it's anywhere else. For me, I would say, do not take antibiotics unless you absolutely have to. And I have to concede, I had to do that. Otherwise, I'd be dead a long time ago. I've told, I've told you about that. So this is, to me, not a not an absolute thing. This is, has to do with, you've got to look, lay out the facts. Nothing but the facts, ma'am. As best as you can find them. And then now we learn we have to weed through all the, the wrongful government sanction. Or, wasn't so, see, that report wasn't wrong, was it? That study didn't say it was wrong. It actually delineates one thing. What we would do is we would look past and say, oh, that these antidepressants are fine, generally. So they didn't lie to you, but they omitted something. They didn't put a warning that anybody outside of this class in use may have problems. And I say it that way because who knows what ultimately. What we do have evidence is that it does have problems, but no one wants to talk about that. And so we have these official sanctions, and the word sanction is the uh, prohibition of something as well as the uh, authorization for it, the same word. As we have this so-called double speak, it's already built into the <laughs> into the language. Uh, CDC alleges kratom is contaminated with salmonella. MSM blows it up. I talked a little about this kratom. Is the only reason why I'm talking it again. Those of you that may have jumped in and wanted to help protect someone else, maybe a tool, that, uh, a medicine that they that believed in a plant. Again, not a synthetic. This is actually a natural one. Uh, the the CDC is all over against this. You need to make a body of knowledge. Uh, facts, uh, statements in proper form, uh, and then the substance of which is contained in that form. Uh, the discussion about how this is a, how this stuff is a wrong or a farce or, or not possible. But now they come up because they, they realize the record's really bad. They're going to now up the, they're going to double down here. Uh, now uh, kratom contained contaminated with salmonella. All right, I'm, again, I don't need to go through the whole story. You can read this stuff uh, if you're interested. You can see, uh, even if you're not interested in Kratom, how the government does things so that you can anticipate your future action or your anticipation on how you move it into the future by how they might respond. Again, this is all looking at the enemy, understanding the terrain and the ter- territory, its habits, and then making a strategy and uh, applying the tactics in order to defeat them ultimately. Not walking in because i got some patriot magic shield that that, that uh, is the magic shield. A uh, great time contaminated with salmonella. I, I just I couldn't believe what I was reading right there. But boy, they're just like the hail mary about this kratom for some reason. Uh, but remember, I talked to you last week 
I think it was last week, uh, Britain has now testing for these antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria on chicken. So my question on the Twitter back out was uh, maybe it was the chicken they ate. Because what they're, what they're also explained is that there's a loophole that allows meat containing salmonella bacteria to be sold to Americans. And this was another story about the Brexit that the United, the Britain would be looking to the United States and our lowered, our lowered uh, regulations uh, regarding these things. That there's a loophole in America for salmonella bacteria. How did the CDC not check to see if whether or not they had some bad chicken when they applied that to Kratom? It is really kind of a fascination to me. When you see uh, so much of the salmonella now everywhere, what about maybe their vegetation or their sprouts? Maybe the CDC should outlaw the FDA and doctors instead, then close the shop due to a conflict of interest, you think? Yeah, that's what I think, folks. I mean, if you're going to look so narrowly and just pick and choose what you're going to do, you, you you live in that adjective society that the future they want, the future we want. We is not you. We is them. We I read what Agenda 2030 and other places. The future we want. It's all in the documentation. It's not your future and the future you want. It's the future they want. But the problem is, is you're not uh, your crickets, and they're in the seat of decision. But here's how they pu pull this out. I was astonished. That uh, so many people got uh, are getting affected by salmonella, but that all of a sudden now kratom is the uh, is the the menace. I don't know about kratom, and I've never had this stuff. And yet they would not look at not look at the uh, salmonella on the chicken that's allowed in a loophole. And then nobody in kratom that I can see is advertising that they pulled this out and said, whoa, 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 hold it. You allow salmonella on chicken, and then you will not allow it on kratom, first of all. Secondly, why are you allowing that salmonella on the chicken just for Americans? Did you know that, folks? I didn't know that. So wash your chicken and cook it good. And the other problem, remember, uh, you got to be careful. Now you got to be careful on even touching your food. I got it. Next, next tab explains explains the report about that. You can't even touch this stuff. It's so bad. But before I get there, safety breaches at the U.S. meat plant sparked outcry in U.K. over possible post-Brexit trade deal. Was what I was just talking to you about. It. The loophole is affecting Britain. Uh, this is a country that had just found out last week, or if not, uh, sometime right before, that they have things on their chicken that don't die. How bad can it get, folks? I, I, they're allowing all this, and then Kratom becomes a problem? Maybe you should stop your chicken industry. It's killing people, right? No, no. See, this is what I told you about. It's how this works. They can poison you a little bit. What was that number? One in 50. If you go look at the uh, information as it rolls down, like with John Rappaport talking about these uh, antipsychotics, whatever they're called, whatever they are, it was one in 25 is affected. Now that's a now take fifty percent of those people and that's a, a, a one in twenty not one in fifty but you take half twice of those and you have the one in fifty number don't you? So half of the one in twenty five in society under psychotics could in a teenager that population is the number of potential mass murders in this country is the same number. All you got to do is double that number and you get the span what I call the just looking at it the magic one fit one in fifty. The disease, the acceptable disease. Well, they got to affect a lot of people, apparently twice as many people, to get the uh, the psychotically driven mass murderers, uh, uh, one in 50 potential in this nation. That's the number they seem to be focusing on. But they'll attack the Kratom for having salmonella on it, and they will allow a loophole for the chicken. And, and the, the, the Brits are quite fine with, the, with their... Uh, 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 antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria on their chicken, but would not like salmonella from America. Is is the height of insanity in my mind at some level. So post Brexit causes a problem. <laughs> they're going to allow the, the, the big problem with the Brits is this loophole. So Americans, there's a loophole. You're going to have salmonella 
on your uh, on your meat, on your chicken. Uh, you are going to be poisoned a little bit, just like the Clean Water Act. Not to keep it away from you, but to allow it so that industry can keep on going. It's about that bottom line, remember. And what else do we get affected by? It's not just the bacteria. It's just not the uh, the the pharmaceutically resistant bacteria. It's it's that this you can get this stuff by touching it. Uh, the pain was immense. The rare strain of salmonella. Remember, these are resistant. Uh, victims share horrible experience, and uh, this is the condition sta- conditioned upon this discussion in the in the Brexit United States uh, problem. Uh, this is happening in Maine. Uh, by a uh, gentleman bought three packages of hamburger, uh, divided it in three, ate some burgers, and and well, nearly dies from this this thing that he has. He ends up having to have IV solutions put in him, three liters of fluid. It was a salmonella poisoning that they just don't see. It's very rare. It affected him terribly. Pain, excruciating pain. This is in the United States. This was in the hamburger. To the credit of the government, they tracked it back down to him. Uh, They did have the samples, the two the three samples he had divided, they gave, he gave him back two samples to test. It did uh, did test for a rare strain. Where are these rare strains coming from, folks? In his case, there was one, just like me, I can just read the guy's point. There was only one antibiotic able to kill the virus that took him out. And it was a long recovery process after that. And we now hear that these loopholes... Uh, the government allows you to be poisoned a little bit. And so what other things are they poisoning? This comes up as well. Glyphosate residues discovered in almond milk, bread, and veggie burgers. What? No salmonella? No. New laboratory testing commissioned by moms across America has shown the presence of the world's most used herbicide glyphosate in almond milk, vegetarian burgers, bread, and skippies, 100% natural peanut butter, and Lipton's 100% natural mint and green tea. Uh, enough said. They're, it's all Tropicana, Minute Maid, orange juice. It's all in there, folks. This glyphosate was was supposed to break down. It doesn't. Uh, we've talked about behind the woodshed how it, uh, the studies are that it affects your gut bacteria. Your gut bacteria is the, it's, it's the, the gateway to your body, the gateway to your health. If you don't got a good gut bacteria, forget it. You're done. You're going to have problems, and you're continually to have problems, and it allows more more bacteria in. That's where we see the the ulceration problem. So we don't have the precautionary principle on our side here. It's about the bottom line that the study now is. You can read it for yourself if you you know as you want and as you want to promote uh, your point on fact uh, that this, the residues are there. You're going to get the uh, the bobblehead that will say, but we don't have a test. There's no scientific test that that harms you. How about I just don't want it in my food? I don't need a scientific test. The burn's not on me. Um, but what I want, uh, the burn's on you to, uh, first of all, to show me how you have the right to impose that on me, uh, then to find out whether or not I, uh, I still want it in my food, and then to find out that maybe you can test it. Maybe it advances the health in me. Maybe you can show me that. Maybe we'll be in 150 years, we'll have adapted, right? Not even evolution, adaption. Is that possible? Well, there's a study out all, all together. We might, the epigenetic change may help and happen to us. Nature is powerful, folks. So it'll help as much, much as they use it to kill you. And they, they prey upon the, uh, the function that you don't have a clue about, that the body works automatically, the time out of mind about how this thing works until it doesn't. Even finding out now that the the, the, gene, the cells change genetically in death, and they're trying to work out how to test when you died exactly because of this change that goes on, and maybe what you got died from by the change in the cell, which continues to adjust after death. But our body is a pretty fascinating thing. It's, it's this creation, whatever however we want to acknowledge that it's, a, it's this machine that we have. Uh, but we now find out. As we move along, as we adapt, that maybe maybe we adapt in other ways as well to protect us as we move through and survive what we do to ourselves when we get going into excess. Evolution making us too sick to drink. Is there an alcohol apocalypse 
in your future. There's a study that just came out that shows that there's a, well, examining trends across the human populations, the animal human, the animal that they, you, are, you are, scientists from University of Pennsylvania found the human genes are developing variants of an enzyme that breaks down alcohol in the body. Because these new variants are less effective at tackling the alcohol, some drinkers are left too sick that they are unlikely to develop a taste for it. Now, my question on that is, is the body doing it naturally, like it did in vaccines? Or is this becoming an epigenetic change that the chemi new, uh, live, uh, better living through chemistry, as they promoted in the 60s till today, actually is adjusting us uh, to be less, uh, less um, receptive to the alcohol? Now, alcohol is understood to be a poison. However, uh, in very moderate uses, it actually can stimulate certain things. Again, everything seems to have a moderation point. And I don't have a problem with alcohol as far as I don't, I don't go drink, I don't crave it, I don't, I don't know. There's just never been a thing. It's been kind of like marijuana, never had a thing, but I use it if I'm going to use an, uh, if I'm going to extract a natural, a synthetic now, something synthetic out of a plant, I may, I may use an alcohol. It may not be the right uh, solvent for what I want to extract, because there's other things that you need to look at, uh, that you, for the work, the working parts of what you want to draw out. But alcohol is one of them. So, they, again, it's a tool. And in taking it, it is known to be a poison, but it also has uh, these moderating things that you can use with it uh, that when it's in combination with other things may be helpful. But are we, are we naturally gaining a resistance to uh, adapt to the, the environment that we create for ourselves? My other question then implied is, is all this uh, new chemistry biology, uh, better through better living through all this biology and chemistry, the bottom line, actually causing us to be quickly adapting, but in a negative way. Because now if the alcohol in a moderated sense could help and you can't tolerate it, then you wanna, you're you not going to have that tool that it might have been before is not available to you now. And so we really have to start uh, looking at a, at a lot of this. Um, a little closer. We have to think down the road. Like I said, you got to think for your appeal. You really got to look at your life now a little, a little different uh, than than they are driving it harder. Uh, and on this point, a, a, a document came up. I want to talk about what is working. Is our body coming on and defending itself against nature naturally, or, or do the pharmaceuticals uh, do much? And there's a study that popped out. I think it was from 2000. It was. Uh, The annual summary of vital statistics, trends in health of Americans during the 20th century out of December of 2000, I believe, and uh, made this statement. And uh, so this is, uh, again, uh, another p document of a study that was done, and in the record, if you knew where to find it, uh, that explains something. You, I'm not, well, explains what it explains. And we can either have these uh, available to us in our, in our bag of, uh, of defenses against an imposition of, a foreign imposition of someone thinking that are do-gooder, they, they want to do better for you, we're here from the government, we're here to help you. Or you have a better word in your mouth say, well, first of all, I don't know how you have the authority to uh, attempt to harm me. This paperwork here in this objection says it will harm me. Uh, notwithstanding that, let me uh, let me put this by you, that the major declines in child mortality that occurred in the first third of the 20th century have been attributable to a combination of improved socioeconomic conditions in this country and the public health strategies to protect the health of Americans. These public health measures include included the establishment of local health departments in nearly all the states. State and local health departments implemented these public health measures including waste treatment, food safety, organized solid waste disposal, and public education about hygienic practices. These improvements in water and food safety and purity are linked to the major decline in diarrheal diseases seen in the early years of the century. Similarly, improvements in housing and redu the reductions of mortality from tuberculosis and other diseases attributable to person-to-person -to -person airborne transmission. Vaccines, while first used in the 18th century, became more widely implemented in the middle part of the century. Vaccines against diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis 
became available during the late 1920s, but only widely used in a routine pediatric practice after World War II. Thus, vaccines, vaccination, thus vaccination does not account for the impressive declines in mortality seen in the first half of the century. The reductions in vaccine preventable diseases, however, are impressive. Did you hear that, folks? The vaccination does not account for the impressive declines in mortality seen in the first half of the century. And you see the charts of this document, which I'll have a link for, and you see that these were natural, the bodies, uh, the people, the populations were naturally gaining resistance to these things. This claim right here completely shows that there was, there's really nothing for the, the vaccines to do today in some regard. That said, and I've seen some evidence of certain things in certain vaccines, certainly not the 69 or 70 that I'm injecting your little ones with in such a concentrated form. There's a couple of things about them, these other ones that seem to be valid. But they're the special, you have the very, very special vaccine. And I don't even know if they can actually be manufactured safely, to tell you the truth. So I have that, I always have the manufacturing problem. Remember, Remember, the, the, they have a problem with the filtration process. Remember, I read that a long time ago. They really can't get these uh, things out, these proteins uh, out that uh, are the constructed parts of how they make them. So I always have a problem with that. But then when you're faced, let me get to the point about that too. When you're faced with your, with your mortality, like I was with an antibiotic, and I was really anti-antibiotic at the time, we had all kinds of other things I did until I got that, that sepsis in the blood. There's nothing to get away from that. My body was healthy enough at the time to stop it for two and a half weeks, something that kills people in four days. At the end of two and a half weeks, I had to admit I was going to lose. So at the point I was going to die, I went in, and I think maybe guys do that anyway. I finally went in and said, okay, what is, what is this thing, and can you stop it? Otherwise, I'm dead by Monday. It was on Friday. And so the, I, I, they administered an antibiotic, and it was the answer. In this case, if you're facing the need of a vaccine or death, I mean, literally death, like I, I, I now know it, uh, then I can't say that that wouldn't be the tool you would choose. So I can't necessarily at all be uh, adverse to anything that would allow you to save yourself. And more power to you and the system that would allow that. But we're seeing that there's a natural decline was based on the resilience of the body, the, re, the, re the capacity to uh, adapt over a short time to things that were not good for it as a, as a, think about this as a population. Because some people did die. They didn't pass their genes on. But some people didn't, and they did. And so there's a natural thing going on, which I have told you before. We've already talked about this. At the time the body was, uh, the, bo the populations were getting, gaining resistance to all these things. Uh, there was this, uh, and then the, they started to use these vaccines in increasing value, and the vaccine, the pharmaceuticals, took credit for the fact. But remember what I said, it's a comprehensive approach. Lots of things can be involved, and the things that aren't being looked at by the system, the omissions are what you have to understand. Remember the long list of things that the government started to pay attention to. And it's not in food safety, apparently, when they're allowing salmonella that's killing you, but they had uh, public health measures including water treatment, food safety, organized waste disposal, and public education about hygiene practice. What I say? Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. What is the purity of food? Is hygiene, hygiene, in my mind. Right, making sure that you're eating uh, clean stuff, uh, and so and then housing. A lot came into bear at that time too, and so that gets clouded over. Does our body actually adapt that quickly? When we know better and do better, we have a better outcome. I guess as I saw in this. So, vaccination has really nothing to say here. It was our understanding of a problem better, which is not going to happen. And we have the authority or the expert out there claiming to uh, the mantle of know-all, and they don't have it. Or they're hidden by whatever, for whatever means. The bottom line, um, just that they get a job because they're paid to do so, which is, again, the bottom. I think it's all about the bottom line. Uh, or you're just that, that whacked that you actually think you can develop a future for everybody else, which has to be the height of violence, uh, the height of an insanity. Uh, in, in other in other people, when they come against you that way, that they uh, they are the, that they come as the do-gooder. They don't ask you, or they derive their consent 
through fraud. As I've pointed out, uh, the con consensus process that goes on, the um, the things that they do to get your consent, uh, utilizing surrogates as well over your interests. All this is out there to see, and we've I've addressed all of this in my short uh, addressment, a tenure of, of against these things and since 2005. I've addressed all of it. Yeah, there's nothing here that's not not uh, known and 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 possible to understand if you just throw out some of what you knew, apply better what you thought you knew, and then get the new stuff that you do need to know, and then apply it all together correctly, only where you need to and only when you need to. It it, it makes things much more efficient, much more efficient. We cut right through all this nonsense. So what a slight change up here. What to a body, to to a body, what what would uh, like when you get a cold? There's signals that are sent off that there's a harm coming, and I've told you to use those like the ones in your nose, or your throat. Go to the go to the peroxide or the silver peroxide mix. Start spraying until you reduce the environmental. You you, you impose a bad environment on whatever it comes at you, and it dies before it, it gets on you. Uh, what in the in the corporate societal system do we have? But whistleblowers that tend to be this this no, this thing that there's a problem. Uh, it's something I, you need to kind of pay attention to uh, be, because it's a, uh, in this story here, it shows out there's a limit and why I wanted you to go. You need to see what the black and white says to find out where that limit is and that it won't be extended beyond. In this story, uh, being a whistleblower, being that tickle in your nose, there's a problem coming or there's been, in, been a problem in you that's now developing. The uh, U.S. Supreme Court refuses to broaden protection for corporate whistleblowers. Well, corporate whistleblowers, I don't know why they put that limitation on, but this was relative to the Securities and Exchange Commission having uh, existing uh, rules that are required to be followed in order to give you the standing of a whistleblower. That if you, the Supreme Court said that given that is not unlawful and that has been established even as an administrative function, if you don't follow what they say the way they say it, you aren't given the so-called, you know, in this case it can be looked at as a privilege, you aren't given the status of a whistleblower for the purposes of the protection. Nor are the people that you're going after subject to it through that channel, which means that you're defeated in you trying to bring out what you thought was a wrong you need to make right. What I'm pointing out here is, and here's an evidence, the Supreme Court will hold up whatever was so-called, so still lawful as a due process if you don't follow that, that you can defy, defeat your own remedy. This is evidence of that. For those that think I'm talking about a lot of conceptual stuff or just opinion, these are provable again in the notice to us. Follow what you're told inside even that what you think is an occupying force for how they're going to follow this thing, and you're going to go a lot farther than you trying to make it up. It's just that's the way it works. Stop making up what you think supposed to be. Stop fighting with me. Go in and find out. If I'm wrong, you can find it in the black and white. If you can't find, dig in and uh, defeat these people that are defeating us by all this color of authority. The felony against, the felonies against us, whether by commission or omission. Hope something I said today helps you out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all the donations. Hopefully we'll, we'll breach the, uh, we'll breach that blockade uh, here for the little bit left we need. Thank you, Grimner, for all you do at reallibertymedia.com. Donation button uh, somewhere, everywhere on the pages and the way the pet website is pay, uh, set up. You hit donate or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's there, ucy.tv. Uh, Jules, thank you for what you do in the uh, syndication, the rebroadcast, and all that neat stuff. Uh, anybody else that's out there, the Minds people, uh, BitChute, uh, thank you for all your support and your re reminding uh, at the Minds and maybe whatever you do over at BitChute. I'm not so sure and all that. It's just so much. But uh, again, I'll be here next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>